Um, today is about from here to the world. So I'm going to talk about three ships. Uh, the SS Manchuria, SS Partis, uh, NCC-1701. Uh, Trekkies probably know what this is. Uh, so the SS Manchuria. In 1823, this person, uh, James Monroe, uh, created the James Monroe Doctrine. And what this is is basically go west. So with this doctrine, uh, the United States went west from the 13 original uh, colonies to all the way to the Philippines. This is the Mon Monroe Doctrine. Uh, during this process, anyone who was not a uh, Caucasian was thought to be a animal. In 1905, uh, these two people, uh, President Roosevelt and Taft, uh, sent this boat, the SS Manchuria, on a long journey. It was called the Imperial Cruise. It was the biggest delegation to be sent to uh, Asia uh, ever. So they went to Hawaii, Japan, Philippines, which was part of the US back then, uh, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Beijing, Korea, Japan, and back to San Francisco and back to uh, Washington, DC in 1905. Basically, uh, Roosevelt sent Taft to meet this person. Uh, and Roosevelt's daughter actually met uh, King Kojong, and Kojong said, we have the promise of America, she will be our friend, whatever happens. But uh, Roosevelt said uh, in the Oval Office, I should like to see Japan have Korea. So uh, these guys just didn't know. Uh, so in 1910, uh, according to the Japanese Monroe Doctrine, which is that Japan now goes west, and takes over all the countries in the West. Uh, this is what it's spelled out in Chinese, Taedong Gongyang in Korean. Uh, the Japanese considered anyone, all Chinese, Korean, and everyone in Asia as animals, uh, and that's why we had sex slaves. Uh, but what happened in 1941 was that uh, the Monroe Doctrine backfired when the Japanese uh, went east and uh, attacked Pearl Harbor. So in 1941, uh, another Roosevelt, uh, in this case FDR, signed the war doctrine against, uh, against uh, Japan. And I want to show you a map of uh, 1943 Japan. Uh, all the area within the red boundary is Japan in 1943. So the reason I show this is, uh, I want to talk about uh, Asia and how all these, this whole area has a very common history or a common modern history of the 20th century. In 1945, okay, 1945 uh, the uh, World War ended. Uh, since 1945, there have been 103 countries that have claimed independence. So 103 countries, new countries after 1945. Of 103 countries, less than five countries are out of poverty. Out of poverty. The rest are all in poverty. Think of all the African nations. Think of all the Asian nations. 1950, uh, the, there was a Korean War. Uh, this is during the Korean War where you see uh, people escape. This is during January. If you fall into the water, you die. They, they climbed onto the bridge, crossed the bridge. You can see people way over there uh, uh, fleeing for freedom in 1950. In 1953, the war ended. And in 1962, about nine years after the war, the per capita income of Korea was $82 per year. So we made $82 in 365 days per person. Uh, we were uh, out of the 177 countries then, then, we were number 172. Currently, Afghan Afghanistan is 172nd in the world. So second boat is SS Partis. Uh, 160 years ago in, uh, in England, some people thought that we should uh, engage both uh, knowledge and design. So 
mixed the left brain and the right brain and created something called the uh, AA. Uh, here, uh, but after that, in 1914, what happened was uh, the First World War broke out. In 1919, after the war, the League of Nations uh, was formed. This was to prevent war. Obviously, they, uh, they were not able to prevent war. Later, it became the UN. Uh, in 1929, um, there was the Great Depression. And uh, people, people were living in uh, the worst misery in the world. In 1933, a few years after the de Depression, these people, like, like us, a few people met and took this boat, the SS Partis, and went to Athens. And on the boat, going to Athens, they talked to each other and came up with an idea. And that idea in 1943 became the Athens Charter. Now, what is the, now what, what is the Athens Charter? Basic, basically, the Athens Charter is uh, separating live, work, and play space. That's what it is. It's, it's very basic. Uh, it's zoning. It's what we call zoning. You have industrial zones. You have uh, residential zones. That's the Athens Charter. So this is one of the uh, early plans. You see that you have a residence, park, you have some office spaces, and up there you have a uh, factory. So you s try to separate uh, uh, functions so that you make our environment more livable. Uh, the first experiment, the first human experiment happened between 1962 uh, to 2000. And it happened in a country that had only $82 per person per year. And it happened in Seoul. Uh, this is 1978. And you can see uh, there was no television, so this is entertainment. The same place is now express bus, bus terminal with uh, the Marriott Hotel. This is the most expensive uh, uh, residence uh, today. But in 1978, there was farming in front of it. This is what it is now, Hyundai uh, Apartu. This is the market, 1980, uh, and this is. Uh, Karak market in uh, today. This was helped by the UN IBRD uh, funding. Uh, until 1985, Korea received foreign aid to implement these type of projects. A lot of flooding happens all over the world. 1976, uh, this is flooding in Seoul. Uh, during the winter, there's drought, extreme drought, and I remember carrying uh, water when I was young. Uh, this is a uh, river, Yangjie Stream. Actually, this site right here is where the current Olympic Stadium is in Seoul. Uh, what, what you do is you use your brain and do engineering first. You use politics to implement the engineering. And this is, this is what we had in 1995. Uh, we tamed the water so that there was no, no more flooding. Uh, look at this uh, stack. And after that, people start to think about the environment. So now, uh, 2009, you have uh, this. And what was feared, water is feared in, in poor countries. It is feared because there is flood, because people die. Uh, now, uh, it's part of life. This is coex. Uh, 19, 1976, this is southern part of Seoul. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's no roads, no infrastructure, so it's just a bicycle and people with bricks trying to build something. What was very intelligent of the people who implemented this was to bring first education. This is, uh, this is Gyeonggi High School. It's the equivalent to, uh, let's say, the best uh, high schools uh, in the world. Uh, they place it out in nowhere. With that, houses began to, uh, to come. People, like, people want education. Same site, 1987. Same site, 2009. You see the difference within one generation. So uh, about the 10th largest economy in the world right now. Now, uh, I am working on the second uh, experiment that started in 2008. 
the experiment will go to, to uh, 2030, and it's, it's in the capital of uh, Vietnam, Hanoi. Uh, the capital right now is 300,000 people planned for uh, 10 million, I'm sorry, 3 million people planned for 10 million people. Seoul is uh, 20 million people, by the way. Uh, the size of Hanoi is five times the entire size of Seoul. It's three times the size of New York, entire New York. And what I do, I, I also wear a, a suit sometimes uh, in front of, uh, and explain that uh, a plan uh, based on the Athens Charter, you have a, a farming area, green area, livable area, work area, etc. cetera. Uh, to very, that's the prime minister of uh, Vietnam. So I tried to convince him and say, look, uh, you should do this. And uh, to do that, I have to wear a tie. Uh, <laughs> um, so this is the current plan. Uh, and I can tell you today, it's, it passed the National Assembly. The, the capital of Hanoi will have 70% green area. 70% green area of the entire city. This, this will go down in history, I think, I hope, I think. Uh, and it will be the first sustainable capital in the world. The first sustainable capital in the world. Now, the third ship is uh, NCC 1701. Um, and in 2009, the World Bank in Singapore said uh, the 21st century will be defined by urbanization. Urbanization. Humanity will be defined by urbanization. Why? Well, the Asia Development Bank says 1.2 billion people will be urbanized in the next 20 years. So how big is 1.2 billion people? Uh, Europe is 500 million. U.S. is 300 million. Japan is 120 million. So Japan, U.S., Europe, all together, all the cities in all, all those areas together are less than 1.2 billion. So we will have that many cities within 20 years. And uh, it's going to take trillions and trillions of dollars each year, and we do not have the money. We do not have the money. Uh, most of it will happen in Asia. Uh, a lot of it will happen, of course, in China and India. Uh, my worry is that a lot of it will happen in ASEAN countries. Uh, ASEAN countries are the, these 10 countries with 600 million people, but they are very poor, except for Singapore and Brunei, of course. And a lot of urbanization will happen here. You all saw the movie uh, Slumdog Millionaire. Everything's going to be become a slum if we don't do this right. Uh, the economic growth rate during, the, during 2007 was pretty high in this area, but it, during the financial crisis, everything went wrong. Uh, so it's very vul vulnerable. Uh, urbanization, the total urbanization of humanity is now over 50%, but if, Singapore is 100% urban, but if you come to Vietnam, 28, 22 for Laos, Cambodia, 31. So Korea is 90, 91% urbanized. Uh, OECD countries are all over 85% urbanized. Now, so there'll be rapid urbanization because urbanization is modernization uh, and industrialization. So uh, we, drew, we do these plans for Hanoi and for other uh, uh, countries. Now, the total, total budget of uh, the, you know, the total size of the Vietnam economy is $200 billion. The size of the budget for the government of Vietnam is $20 billion. The budget of Hanoi is $2 billion. Uh, $2 billion. And we calculated how much it'll cost to do this new uh, capital. It'll take $200 billion. So with a city that has a $2 billion budget that has to pay for everything, how can they do a $200 billion project? So again, back to the Athens Charter, we do all these drawings to make sure it's a good environment, but what happens, they become hanging plans. You have a plan, but because you don't have money, it doesn't get done. This is a plan in Sudan. Uh, I, 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 
Um, uh, so, I mean, this is, they actually want to do this, but it's not going to happen. Uh, uh, so, what is really needed, what is really needed is urban finance. Now, urban finance is uh, very different from uh, 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 regular finance because it involves a government and uh, the private sector. So, Vietnam, I told you the total, the total government uh, money is $20 billion per year. The amount of foreign aid that goes into Vietnam each year is $8 billion. So what the rich countries give to the poor countries matters big time. And Korea is one of the countries that came from the bottom to up here with the help of our friends. We need to help. So I came up with this urban financial matrix. This is the public sector governments, this is the private sector, this is the poor countries, this is the uh, rich countries. So you want, you want the poor government and the rich government and the World Bank working together, but you also want rich, rich companies working with the poor companies. So these are the four players. How do you get them to work? If we can get these four, four entities to work, then we have a solution. And uh, there is uh, currently, uh, support funds from the government. There's now support funds from the private sector, but this is a new model. It's a new model that I'm proposing and uh, trying to start. And what I found out is it kind of looks like this. So I guess you're too young to know this. So this is the... Uh, the enterprise, and what it is is basically you have public finance, private finance, you have a federation council, and you have a crew. And this is a, what I'm proposing is a, is a five-year mission with a crew of uh, maybe one, two, well, you need a captain, you need a very smart guy, you need a doctor, you need engineers, you need a communication specialist, uh, and they're from all different races, uh, and uh, I tried to get William Shatner, but I, I don't think he's uh, up to it anymore. Uh, um, to boldly go where no man has gone before. So, again, public and private together. And if you look at Star Trek, you can, you can Google it or Wiki, Wiki it. Issues include war and peace, value of personal loyalty, authoritarianism, imperialism, class warfare, economics, racism, religion, human rights, urbanism, sexism, feminism, and the role of technology. This is Star Trek, and this is what we need right now. We need the NCC 1701, I guess, dash zero. Because, because cities are public, private, partnerships. Cities are public-private partnerships. All cities are public-private partnerships. Different shapes, but they're public-private partnerships. This is the reason we need the enterprise. All different shapes. Okay, after the final no. I was in London and that's St. Paul's Cathedral, and that's located in the middle of the financial sector. Of course, London is one of the most important financial hubs in the world. I was lucky enough to attend a uh, lecture by Neil Ferguson inside St. Peter's, inside, and it was moderated by a priest, and, and royalty and everybody from the financial in institutions came to this lecture. And the title of the lecture was Men, Money, and Morality. Someone asked, is it men or people? And said, it's men. Women are okay. okay. Uh, uh, um, but after the lecture, I had this question. I mean, what's he talking about? Is he talking about empire? And then, what's going on? I mean, uh, this is 1974 Vietnam. And that's 1973 Vietnam. I have a daughter. And these are both daughters. Uh, it's the same war. 
but you have different outcomes. What's going on? Is it zero sum? Is humanity zero sum? Maybe not. Maybe the public, instead of enforcing, could start to help people. Maybe like the photographer who took the picture on, on your right, who saw the vulture, who saw the little kid crawling to a UN camp, because he could not stand the fact that he wasn't able to help the little boy committed suicide uh, a few months after this. Maybe there's, there is something inside us that says humanity does not have to be zero sum. 5,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, in Asia, some people think it's just Korea, but in Asia, there was, there was four letters written, and there was this dream, and it was written like this, Hongikingan. It literally means betterment of humanity. It does not matter race, religion, ethnicity, um, sex, but the betterment of humanity. There was this dream that has been there for 5,000 years. It has been going on very slowly, but steadily for 5,000 years, and it'll continue slowly, I think. But after the final no, there comes a yes. And on that yes, the future depends. And Sometimes people give their lives for this dream. Sometimes a finger is cut off. Sometimes heads are cut off. But to achieve peace in Asia, that's what it might take. And thank you very much, and bon voyage.